Astro Ventures, welcome back. If you're new to this astrophotography channel, my name is George, and this is the astrophotography channel for DSLR and mirrorless camera bodies combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Sky Guider Pro or the Star Adventure. In today's video, we're going to help out a, uh, one of our friends from YouTube, as well as she is a member of our Astro Venture DSLR Facebook page, which we would love to have you over there and, and join us. But she was having some problems because Deep Sky Stacker was stacking Comet ZTF for her. But in the process, it was giving her this strange artifact, almost like a TIE Fighter silhouette from Star Wars, and it was messing it up. And no matter what she did, it just wouldn't seem to cooperate with her. So she reached out to me, and I told her, you know what? I've got another way that we can take some of your images, stack them, clean up that noise, and then you'll be able to go ahead and process. Now, this method that I'm going to share with you, Deep Sky Stacker is the better way to go. However, when it's not cooperating in this case, you got to look to other options. And so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to take your images, stack them in Photoshop, and then cancel out and clean up that noise similar to what Deep Sky Stacker does. So I'm going to go ahead and close out this image here of... <laughs> the TIE Fighter version of uh, Comet ZTF, and we'll get to work. You're looking at one of the frames that our friend shot. Now, originally, I had all five of the images across the top of my Photoshop, but I've done some of that uh, processing to get this out of the way to speed up the tutorial for you. So this is one of those frames. And what I did is I came to the frame, I hit Control A, Control C to copy it, and then I went over to this first tab, which is the background layer, and I brought in the five images I was working with. So as you saw me do the Control A uh, and the Control C, I did that each time. So this was the second image, the third image, the fourth image, and the one that I just showed you is the next image I'm adding. So I'm now going to go Control V, and I'm going to paste that on top. Now, with each image, and I'm going to go ahead and deselect these other layers because they've already been prepped for doing this stacking, I'm going to show you with the last layer, layer number four, what I did with each layer. So, turning that off, background is the first layer that I decided to build upon, and there is the comet. I brought in, and we'll pretend this is the second layer, the third, the fourth. I did it with each one of them. I toggled it on. I came over here. I set my opacity to about 50%. Hit enter. And you can now see that this is really offset. The original image and layer number four. So we're going to zoom in on this. And now what I'm going to do is manually go ahead and align layer four to the background layer. And I did this with each one of them. Okay, so here we go. This is where it's at. I'm going to press V so that I can start moving. This is where V is attached to, the move tool. And I'm going to go ahead and start moving this star down to this one. Now, the reason why I'm going with this star, it's located close to the comet, but the comet is more fuzzy but this particular star has some nice, crisp, hard lines for alignment. And as I arrow, you'll see that it's moving kind of slowly. To speed this up, I can press the shift down, and then using the arrow, you'll see that it's making jumps. And I'm going to move it closely, and then the last steps, I'll release the shift, and I'll bring this in. And once it looks like I have pretty good alignment, I will then move over to the layers here. And I'm going to toggle this eyeball on and off so that the layer shows me the underlying. And what I'm looking for, and I'm not looking at just this star. I'm checking some of these others as well. But what I'm looking for is, is the star moving? Obviously, there's going to be some noise changes but the core of the star is staying put. Okay, now I did that with each one of these layers. The next step is I'm going to take this and change my opacity back to 100%. Okay, 
Okay, it's now 100%. And each one of these layers I'll show you. Second layer, it's at 100%. Third layer, 100%. Excuse me, <laughs> got my numbering off. Um, layer three, 100%. And the last layer, which is the fifth image, but the fourth layer, it is at 100%. So they're all now aligned with each other. With that, uh, there will still be a distortion out at the outer edges that our camera lenses do, but you're going to be cropping that off anyway because this small target, you're going to crop down to it and that'll get rid of those other parts. Some of you that are more experienced with Photoshop, you might be saying, well, why didn't you use the auto line? Here's what I found. Um, stars just simply don't have enough to them for the auto line, the auto align function to work. And that's why I had to manually do it. And then the other thing is, as I said, five layers is what I decided to work with. If you decided to try and do this, which it would be a massive chore, but if you decided to try and align, say, an hour's worth of data, one of the challenges that you'll run into is in the five layers that I did, there's pretty much just one direction of movement. You add the duration of an hour, hour and a half, two hours, and the Earth's rotation starts to play into it. So it becomes that lateral movement that I'm dealing with with these five layers plus a twist. And as a result, it becomes more difficult to try and align and stack this. So let's go ahead and move on and we'll get to stacking. To go ahead and stack, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click the first layer so it is selected. I'm going to press the shift key down and select the bottom layer. So now all of the layers are selected. Next, we're going to come up here to layer. And I'll leave this open so that you can see the pathway in which we're going. We're going to move down to Smart Objects. And then we're going to click on Convert to Smart Object. And I'll leave this up for a moment. What this is going to do is take all five of the layers, put them together so that they act as if they were a flattened singular layer. However, they are not. They are actually the five different layers, but they will act as one. Uh, in photography, when you have a lot of editing to do, sometimes we will edit them in the smart object um, setting. I don't know what you would want to call it, but we edit them as a smart object because smart objects, you're not committing any of the changes, so it can always be undone. So I'll go ahead and click Convert Smart Object, and over here on the side, you'll see the layers combine into one. And then you'll notice this little symbol here. This is telling you this is your smart object. Now, the next step, you're going to go into layer. You're going to go back to smart objects. And you're going to move down to the bottom to stack mode. The stack mode you're going to want is mean. And what it is going to do, similar to Deep Sky Stacker, is it's going to look at the five layers that are in here and it's going to look for the shifting around of noise to cancel and smooth it out and clean it up just like Deep Sky Stacker does. Now obviously the more layers you have the cleaner you can get an image but we do have to as I said earlier using this method the longer you go the more rotational twist you're going to have in the image. So let's go ahead and click on the mean. It will process. It does pretty good and operates pretty quickly. Okay, so there we go. Now you may have seen that it cleaned up a bit, but I'm going to open up now an image where I can show you the side-by-side. -side. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna have to go another round. Let's see here, file, open, and let's look at the side-by-side. -side. Here we go. And I'll be able to show you now exactly the difference between them. So let's open this up. And all right, here we go. Now, I understand that this is not going to be exactly the, the best visual because we have this at 200%. But in doing so, here's the unstacked single frame on the left. You'll notice the grain and the noise that's in here. And you can see how much smoother this is from five frames. 
And obviously this smooth one doesn't look as good as it would because of the fact that we're magnified to 200%. So with that, and I'm going to go ahead and close that, close this. And I'm going to close that single frame that I showed you importing earlier. Okay, so now I am on my smart object that has been stacked and cleaned up. And at this point here, because I have it exactly where I want, I will actually hit Control Shift E and I'm going to, excuse me, let me back that up. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually right click on this and I'm going to rasterize layer. And that will flatten the layer so that it becomes a singular committed cleaned up image similar to what Deep Sky Stacker would have output for you. And now at this point, you can go ahead and go in and start editing your image. And like I said, you'll end up cropping out little distortions you'll have at the outer edge. But using just these five images, you know, I'm not really even seeing it being a factor out here on the edges. But there you go. Um, sorry, not going to get into editing this particular image. I just wanted to show you another way to stack and clean up noise when maybe Deep Sky Stacker isn't working for you. So until next time, I want to say thank you to our YouTube friend that uh, loaned me these images to put this together. And I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.